Welcome back, friends. And if you're new here, no, I am not a cosplayer. My mom bought me this outfit. I guess she just thought it was cute. I literally just showed up my doorstep and she was like, wear it and something. So here it is. That's for you, mom. Now, if you haven't already guessed it from my outfit, hair, thumbnail and title, I am watching the original Descendants movie. Now, for those of you who aren't new here, you might have remembered that two weeks ago, I watched Descendants Rise of Red and it was... It was something. It kind of reminded me of Hamilton. If there was auto-tune and James Charles. You'll have to watch the commentary to know what I mean. Anyway, you all requested for me to watch Descendants this week. And I am not going to let you down, alright? If there's one thing I'm going to do, it's hit the curb while I parallel park. <laughs> but also deliver on my promises. Let's go. The movie starts off with a little iPad kid backstory. We learned that 20 years ago, Beauty and the Beast united the land and created the United States of Oregon, or the USA, except they don't have issues with climate change, the economy, women's rights, cybersecurity, soggy paper straw. You know what, that's commentary for another video. Back in Oregon, we meet Ben, the almost 16 year old soon to be king because that is a great age to ascend the throne. Everyone knows that adolescents historically just make the best decisions and are great at ruling kingdoms. We also meet Ben's parents, Belle and the Beast. Lovely Aww. couple. I doubt that his dad is gonna say anything about being attracted to kitchenware within the first minute of them on screen. 16, it's far too young to be crowned king. I didn't make a good decision until I was at least 42. Uh, uh, you decided to marry me at 28. I was either you or a teapot. I spoke too soon, it only took 30 seconds. However, Ben's dad's dating preferences are not the only shocking thing in this scene. Ben makes his first kingly proclamation. He wants to take the exiled kids of the villains in this place called the Isle of the Lost and transfer them to Ordon Prep, where all of the princesses' kids go. I mean, like, what could go wrong? Inviting a marginalized group that you oppressed for the past 20 years, that sounds like a great idea. At Ordon Prep, the villains' kids might forge friendships, play on the football team, pillage, kill, burn down villages. Who knows? But as someone who's watched a lot of Disney Channel original musicals, I know there is definitely one thing they are gonna do. Dance. Okay, Skrillex. I'm loving this EDM vibe. You know, nothing screams evil like a techno beat and a flash mob. Okay, but why does this dance look like the hip hop dance that Joe Jonas was trying to teach at Camp Rock? I can't unsee it. And these kids can't catch a break. You will go, you will find the fairy godmother and you will bring me back her magic wand. Easy peasy. I love how straightforward this plot is. We are only seven minutes in and Mal's mom, Maleficent, has set up the story faster than a Hallmark movie about a city girl going to her small town home for Christmas. Perhaps the only thing simpler than this plot is the naming of their kids. Maleficent's daughter is Mal. The evil queen's daughter is Evie. Jafar's son is Jay. It's like they named their kids the non-copyright dollar store ripoff version of themselves. It's weird, but it's not as strange as the villain kids meeting Ben and his girlfriend for the first time. Hello, Foxy. The names. Jay. Eey, a little creepy, but if I'm being so for real right now, like that would have worked on me. Let's be real. But the awkward flirting doesn't stop there. You had me at Prince. Kenny Ortega, I love you, I love you so much, but what the bleep is your direction for Evie's voice? It sounds like you said to her, okay, I want Britney Spears, but if she just finished running a 5K. My loneliness is killing me. <laughs> like, babe, what is that? Well, I try to get over that character choice. The gang heads out to the museum where Fairy Godmother's wand is held in. And instead of the wand, we get the next best thing, a Broadway number done by Maleficent. Future safe and sure. I'm just imagining Kristen Chenoweth signing on to do this movie and she's like, yeah, I don't care if show tunes is not the vibe here. I'm gonna need my own solo and I'm gonna need to sing every octave on the piano. <laughs> chop, chop. And you know, I am sure they did that for her because she is a queen. All right, she's getting her bag from Disney's budget, but you know who's fumbling their bag? The villains kids. Yeah, they mess up the whole operation and unfortunately they are forced to retreat to the worst place imaginable. High school. But it's not all bad in high school. Uh, Jay finds out that he's good at whatever sport this is and apparently breakdancing. Evie flirts with Prince Charming and Ken and Mal and Ben have this interaction. You should really think about taking this talent off the locker and into our class. Way to take all the fun out of it. Huh. 
She's so cool and mysterious. The classic smirk and hmph is actually one of my favorite like romantic teen tropes ever. I feel like I've never seen it in any other rom-com other than a teen one and I live for it. Like I've never had a boyfriend, I, I know, shocking. But like if I'm talking to him and I'm explaining the entire plot of the Summer I Turn Pretty books, I need to walk away and I need him to be like, <sighs> Wow, she's so cool and mysterious. <laughs> like if he doesn't do that, I don't want him. Okay kids, here's my favorite portion of this movie. I call it dialogue that doesn't move the plot along but needs to be talked about. I mean, that's what old Cindy did, right? And your mom bibbity bobbity booed the living daylights out of her. <laughs> she did what? That sounds like she murdered Cinderella. Speaking of criminal activity. Is this your first time? We don't really date much on the island. It's more like gang activity. Okay, that is a wild line. Like absolutely bonkers for Disney, but like still not as weird as Ben saying this to Carlos. Good boy. I mean, you're a good runner. You're, you're, you're fast, you know. Oh. oh, Ben is not only the king of Oregon, he's also the king of making everyone around him feel uncomfortable in this film. But you know what? Ben could start barking and running around on all fours and everyone else in this movie would have to accept it because they need to get their hands on that fairy godmother's wand. And they overhear from Ben that at his coronation, the only people on the podium next to that wand are him, his parents, and his girlfriend. So Mal knows what she's gotta do. Obviously she's gotta kill Belle, marry the beast, and become his mom. I mean, I guess she could make a love potion and turn it into a cookie and feed it to him, but I feel like that's so predictable. Disney would never- Mal, have you always had those little golden flecks in your eyes? Imagine if after eating the cookie, he locks eyes with Jay, and then we get this very different, very progressive Disney Channel film. Yeah, that didn't happen. But instead, we get a lovesick version of Ben that honestly might be more disturbing than him calling Carlos a good boy. Give me them! Give me them! It is very much giving Travis Kelsey at the Super Bowl when he's like, Viva Las Vegas! Viva Las Vegas! <laughs> it's the same energy there. And if that isn't ick enough, he takes it to another level with a little song and dance where his love and funk knows no bounds. I, I don't even have words for what I just witnessed. I will be talking about this dancing clip in therapy along with Joe Jonas trying to do hip hop at Camp Rock and Hunter from Jenny and Georgia doing his tap routine. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. Anyway, after all of that, Ben asks Mal to go on a date and fortunately, his greeting skills are much better than his dancing. For the first time, I understand the difference between pretty and beautiful. Now that is a greeting. That is also what Harry Styles said when he met me. Okay, but this date is actually like really adorable. When I was watching this, like I was sitting on the couch, squealing, giggling, kicking my feet up. And then of course Ben ruins it. <laughs> I just, I just can't defend this guy. And then of course, right after this Mal starts singing her sad girl song. You know what, relatable. If that was me and I just watched Ben do that, I probably would have my disappointment ballad as well. I also I love where the song is positioned in this movie. Like right now, Mal is out there just agonizing over flashbacks of her and Ben and she's so torn, she doesn't know what to do. Meanwhile, Ben is oblivious. He's like the definition of like a gold retriever boy and he's just swimming laps around her. While Ben's living in blissful ignorance doing laps, Mal is grappling with whether or not she should keep the love potion on Ben or not. And unfortunately for her, his family day performance does not make it easier. Hey, come on, go on, unfold your menu. Take a that was the most white boy rap and dance I have ever witnessed. He should be king crown of Oregon and West Virginia. His dancing is so white, he probably thinks salt and pepper is spicy. His dancing is so white that I can hear someone eating a cookie and saying, these things are dangerous. His moves are the dance equivalent of a live, laugh, love sign. His moves are so white, he probably screams at his- Okay. His moves are so white, they colonize me. Okay, 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 listen. I'm not one to talk, my moves aren't any better, but that was wild. Ben's moves on the dance floor, they might be a work in progress. But his smooth moves with the ladies now, he's not lacking there. Mal decides to take the love potion off of Ben, but he actually reveals to her that he knew the entire time and it wore off on their date. So then what, you've just been faking it since then? I haven't been faking anything. Oh, so cute. I'm honestly so jealous. The nice thing a guy's ever said to me is you're funny for a woman. Ugh, alas, I'm still waiting on my dream guy who barks before he does a dive, has swoopy brown hair and rich royal parents. But while I wait on that, Ben is waiting on the moment he becomes king. What is with those fists? <laughs> ben saw the Arthur meme once and was like, yeah, yeah, that's gonna look really cool while I walk down the aisle in front of all my loved ones and all the subjects of my country. Also, 
Hold up. Ben completely lied about his girlfriend being on the podium with him. I mean, look where Mal is, first of all, not on the podium. And second of all, there's a bunch of girls behind her. She could have gone to the front without pretending to be his girlfriend. Should have went with the eliminating mom plan, but no, Disney did not want to take my advice. Now, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. The wand is right there. Mal has to choose. Help her mom out or... New key. <gasps> Or Jane the Fairy Godmother's daughter could do that. Unfortunately though, she opened a riff until the Isle of Lost, so Maleficent ended up showing up anyway. Okay, stop. I want to know whose decision it was to tell the actors to act frozen. It looks so fake. You can see them shaking and blinking. I know editing can do that. I can do that on editing. Did they did they use iMovie for this? What was the budget there? I Disney, I need answers. Speaking of bad editing. I can do that on CapCut. The editing budget for this movie must have been a couple packs of Trident gum and like an Olive Garden gift card. Cause what is that? Anyway, they quickly vanquish Maleficent because she has no love in her heart. I really think it's because they didn't have enough green in their pocket to pay for Kristen Chenoweth with be on screen any longer, but that's for another commentary video. But who cares? Because we get our happy ending. Mal and all of our friends decide to be good. And of course, no fairy tale is complete without a super generic pop song, choreography, and pyrotechnics. Final thoughts, let me start off by saying I am a judgmental piece of garbage, and that is why I make commentary videos. That being said, I can't hate on this movie. Like, I genuinely liked it. I'm dressed as this movie. Okay, my mom bought me this, but still. Like, I'm a fan. Maybe it's the nostalgia, maybe it's Maybelline, maybe it's the fact that Mal and Ben have the best chemistry since Troy and Gabriella, but I really liked it. I thought the musical numbers, for the most part, were very purposeful, and they moved the story along without reiterating something that we'd heard in a scene before. That was my big gripe with Descendants Rise of Red is I felt like the lyrics were just very literal and it really didn't feel like it moved the plot along at all. I also liked in this movie that all the characters got some form of development. I feel like that's hard to do in two hours, but I thought they did a pretty good job. Now, I'm not gonna say that all the songs are gonna be added to my Spotify favorite list and some of those wigs, they needed a comb through, but Kenny Ortega never misses. Okay, that guy is great. He knows what he's doing. Well, that's my two cents. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please, please, please like, subscribe, and write in the comments what you want me to watch next. Bye, guys!